right, let's not get copywritten. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. It's been a second and where am I? I'm with Wolf and Storm. I just picked up Wolf from the groomer. It is raining again in LA. My hair is extremely fluffy and I'm moving back into my ex's house uh, for the week actually, shockingly, because nobody can take his puppy because he's out of town and Hunter is not fully vaccinated yet. So I'm watching all of the dogs, which is absolutely crazy. I haven't had Starbucks since uh, January. Thought like today was a great day to break that rule. So we have Wolf and Storm in the back of my car. Then at the house we have Monty, Moon, and Harper. Hunter, oh my God, Harper, Hunter. So this is gonna be very interesting to say the least. Also, Joey's out of town for something or other. So yeah, I'm gonna be here for the week. So say a little prayer. All right, boys. Let's go. Are you guys ready to be terrorized? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, hello. Hi, Montana Lynn. You be nice, Moon. Stop it. Look, he's gonna... Come on. Come on. Stop it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Four dogs. <gasps> Hunter Lynn. Hi, honey. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, hi Montana Lynn. Hunter's sniffing Auntie Storm. All right, you guys ready to go? Let's go. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's raining. It's raining. Oh, andale. Hey. Go on. Go on, Montana. They're going potty. Oh my gosh, go po Oh, shitville. Shit alley is what we call this. I actually had this installed when we built this house. This was just supposed to be a walkway, but I said, let's put it, make it turf. We boxed in the AC units, so everybody has a place to go to the bathroom. No, Storm, see, he, you hate it here. You do hate it here. He always pees in the worst places. Hi. Hi, Monty. Do you miss me? I miss you. You guys, she's been staying with Aunt Joey for a little bit to train Montana Lynn. And of course, it's raining for the next two days. <laughs> Isn't that stunning? She loves her sticks. Are you gonna go potty? Good girl. Good girl, come here. She's gotten so big. Hi. Oh, you love Auntie Storm. All right, let's go inside. Come on, come on. Why is this out here? This is what you should be eating from. Let's go. Hi, sweet girl. Oh, hey. How gorgeous are they? You did good. <laughs> There's nothing in here. Wolfie, what do you need? The chaos, the chaos, the chaos. What do you need, water? Okay, let's get you some water. What do you need? Your eyes are very close together, just like your mother. All right, Wolfie just got groomed. Wolfie, you look very handsome. Oh, that's so cute. Wolf and Hunter Lynn. Aw. You guys are so cute together. Not a thought going through your brain, huh? Sweet girl. I miss you so much. Moon, you don't always need to be the center of attention. He's always right here. You have a jumping problem. You need to go to puppy school soon. You guys, look how big she is. She reminds me of her mom a lot. She's a bit naughtier though. She's just not fully house trained yet, which is crazy. Joey does not do a good job with the house training, but she's very sweet. Also, you need more toys. Puppies need enrichment. So they need like little puzzles and little things to keep their brain, you know, learning. That's how puppies learn. So when I was raising Monty, I was super depressed. It was post breakup almost th two and a half years ago. And I only had Storm in the house. So I had a very, very calm older dog and a new puppy, which means Monty took a lot of his isms and his manners, very calm, very well tempered. And Hunter's growing up in a household that's a little chaotic with Moon who is not the best mannered with the jumping and the eating trash and everything. And then Monty who's egged on by her baby and they play like crazy. So as you can see, Monty's right here laying down like a good girl like I taught her. And this one is being a wild child. So I mentioned to Joey that Hunter needs to go to training ASAP while her brain is still fresh and she needs to be kept away from Moon for a little bit at training just because it'll really help calm her down and it'll help with the training. Because if you don't nip it right now when they're babies, it's gonna be very hard and expensive too later on. But this is gonna be an interesting week. I hope you guys are excited to follow along.
the chaos ensues. Also, a lot of you guys ask, or a lot of viewers ask, and they don't know where all the puppies are. So in our breakup, I got Storm, and I got Wolf part-time, and then I got Monty. So I go between two and three puppies, it depends. Joey got Moon, and that's it and Wolf part-time. Lark went to my mom. Initially, she went to me. My mom was living in my guest house at my old house. So she got Lark because she's like this with Lark. They love to hike. They're both similar personalities. Juggling between our two families, we either have two or three dogs at one time. So because Wolf hates being with Joey for the most part because there's a puppy and he doesn't really get along with Moon, he normally will come to me and then Monty will you know, sway between households. And it's just, it's a lot because I really, really miss Monty and she's my dog. I trained her really well and she means so much to me, but obviously so does Wolfie, but Wolfie is technically Joey's dog. He's also technically mine. It's a lot. I don't know. I think this will change when one of us gets in a relationship or one of us like actually moves. We'll see. But right now it works. It's a lot, but it works. But now you guys have like clarity. I know I'm gonna have to tell this like a million times, but I'll just put it in the comments somewhere, I guess. You guys are so cute. They're all really good, honestly. They're great dogs. If Lark was here, it would be over. Where's Wolfie? Wolfie's in his little spot. Okay, lunchtime check-in. Monty's laying here on the grounds. Hunter is a very independent girl. She's playing. Oh, you ripped up another toy, did ya? You're a naughty girl. She's very independent, which I love. And then we have Wolf, who looks so stunning because he just got groomed. He's chilling with Storm over here. And we got Moon. Um, there. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Apparently, you guys threatened one of the new down. I'm so obsessed with the show. It's called Daddy Girls, and I am trying to perfect the accent. It's so good. Highly recommend, but let me just show you guys what is going on in this pantry. This bitch has no food in the house. There's nothing. First of all, all these herbs and seasonings definitely go unused because she doesn't cook. This is all from when I was here. Like there's nothing. Tomato sauce. This is so sad. It's like an abandoned house. Where are the snacks? There's nothing here for me. Actually, I did find something. I found mac and cheese. The only thing, so I'm making some of that on the stove right now. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hey, Monte. Oh, there's a face off between Montana Lynn and Hunter Lynn. And the couch is gorgeous and clean. I washed all the cushions, they're stunning. Got these new pillows, so I had these actually in a closet in the theater that weren't really in use. I always like bought new throw pillows when we were together. So I put these new ones on here and these ones are new as well. And then I washed this one and this one and then the other ones I threw out because you should have new throw pillows every, every couple of years. Well, we survived our first night. What are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, you can't get up here. What are you doing? Slept great. Actually last night, a few of my friends came over, my friend Manny and my friend Z, and we watched the movie Bros, and it was so good. I really, really enjoyed it. It was one of the first all queer ensemble casts films for a major, hey. These two just play all day. Hey, I caught ya. Yeah, I caught ya. I caught ya on camera. All right, I'm feeding Hunter lunch, and this is how she should be eating. This is how Monty grew up eating. This is the wobble ball, and it keeps them busy, and it keeps them, you can literally tell, Instead of gobbling it up in two minutes, you know, she has to tip it over. She has to chase it around a little bit. It comes at different nozzles. So you can see how much comes out. I'm gonna make this a little harder for her. Otherwise she will just eat this so quick. And this is how their brain just develops. Good girl. And this is how you get your dinner. You work for your dinner. I will link this down below, but I've used it on all my dogs and it's wonderful. So these are the Jasmine at Home Depot. I'm obsessed, they're $29. I believe they're, what are they, 15 gallons? They're big and they grow really quickly. Definitely run and grab these if they have them. If it's planting season where you are, they smell so gorgeous. And then these are the olive trees. I needed one more. These are $79. They grow really quickly as well. This is for my garden project. You guys saw in my last vlog. So I'm gonna grab one of these as well. They're really nice, they're like four feet tall and they're beautiful. All right, I'm back home. Look how cute this little purse was. It was so dirty and disgusting and I cleaned it and I washed it just for you guys to share. Go take your bag. They're gonna fight over it. Hi Storm, I'm wearing Joey's Crocs. 
<gasps> She's got her bag. Get your bag, girl. I also washed the bed that I got her forever ago because it stunk so badly. So I'm gonna go put it in her crate. She has been loving this crate. I think I showed you guys in a video before. It's a little pricey, but it is beautiful. It's covered up right now, but it has these two openings here so you can put things in from the top. And also what's really cool is this opens up. So it's kind of like a, like a garage door so they can just hang in there all day like a day bed. And then you can put it down at night and make them all comfortable. So I put some of her favorite toys in here and then I'm gonna put the bed in the back because she does still love this bed. So she has less space if she does have an accident. I'll link this crate down below as well. I think they're giving you guys 15% off, I'm not sure. But this is by the brand Diggs. She got all her adult teeth in. Look how gorgeous they are. Jeez. You good girl and no accidents with me. I'm very proud of you. So the thing with puppies, every month that they age, so if they're a month old, two months old, three months old, four months old, etc., they can hold their bladder for one hour, allegedly. So she is what? She was born in November. I don't really count the first month, obviously. Essentially, she's four months old, but really three months old. So technically she can hold her bladder for three hours. I would cap her around two, two and a half. So every two and a half hours, if you wanna be safe, you can do every two hours. That's how many times you should be taking her out, every two hours if you can. If you can't, they should be at home in their pen with a little pee pad if you need to go run errands. But if you're leaving them for four hours alone in the house, they're oh. gonna have accidents. Wolfie, you already had dinner, so don't try it with me you gorgeous sweet man. Also, it depends how much water you're giving them. And she has been sleeping great with me. Not a peep in her crate at night. She sleeps in until 7.30, eight. I let her stay until eight, which has been wonderful. But they've all been having a ball. I'm shocked. Feeding them separately has, has worked since this one's very territorial. I feed Storm outside. I feed Monty in like that corner. I feed Wolf in that corner. Moon eats over there. And then she eats in her little roly poly ball. There, and it works. What? Vocal. But we're having a good time so far. I'm gonna do a face mask and I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning guys, we are at the flower market. So I actually have a party tonight. Well not I, but my friend Laura is thrusting. She's throwing like a little St. Patrick's Day. I guess it's St. Patrick's Day. I don't know, I don't really celebrate. Don't really know her. And I'm also not a big drinker, but I'm at the flower market bright and early and we're gonna get some flowers to help uh, Laura make some centerpieces. I'm gonna go over a little earlier before people get there. I'm gonna help her do that and then we're gonna make a shirt coochie board together but it's bright and early all the busy workers are out and about this is where i go i'll see you guys in there anybody can go to the flower market i am a wholesaler so i have an account here but if you are like general public or really anybody it's three dollars it's in downtown la and it's worth it definitely worth it you can get great flowers at a great price and have a fun time it's kind of fun to go or go early though go early go before eight right now it's seven check their hours online because there's a few days out of the week that they're closed and i don't think that they're open on the weekends but it's kind of a fun time if you like arrangements and flowers you can get them for a lot cheaper you can get them at the prices that florists get them so 10 out of 10 recommend okay so this is what i got i got a bunch of greens here which are beautiful i don't really like using eucalyptus but this variety is this eucalyptus yeah, this is a variety of eucalyptus. Like, look how pretty and dainty this is. I hate silver dollar eucalyptus, the big round one. I hate those, I think they're super tacky. Personally, I got some wax flowers. These last forever. They're just really pretty and dainty. I got the white and the like light cherry blossom pink because they look like cherry blossoms. I got some white spray roses, some white ranunculus. These are beautiful. And then I got these beautiful white cherry blossoms, but what I'm really excited about is all of this creeping rosemary. This is from my garden. I chopped this the other day, but I'm like, how gorgeous would these be in an arrangement, just like drooping down the side? So I'm gonna try to incorporate it. They have some little purple flowers. So let's see how I can use those and make it like really special. Take a look. <gasps> How gorgeous are they? They turned out so beautiful. This is the creeping rosemary from my house. Little limes from my house too. So cute. Gorgeous. Look, Laura, you have outdone yourself. Okay, I did none of this. Yes. Yes. I did none of this. The leprechaun did it. She did it. Right so here. I did a little. Let me film you. Manny did it all actually. Manny, it looks so gorgeous. Thank you. Daniel did all this. It's the first one I've ever done in my whole life. You don't have fresh cherry blossoms in your. These are cherry arrangement. Isn't that insane? Get out! These? Look at that. Yeah. So Look these will bloom to be little right cherry here. blossoms. Right oh my god. Isn't that insane? That's stunning. He put these blossoms. all over my house. Oh, not right there. He put them here. This one. Oh, look at this. 
And wait, in the other arrangement, there's actually little limes. Oh my little, God. little, little citruses. You went all out. I mean, you just gave me the stuff to deal with. I did, and, and he I did. did all of this, all the trays. That's I, not, I did this in my sleep last night, actually. That was very did. easy. He did. It's all from, Manny's gonna, Manny will- I'm nibbling perched. the whole time, you know that. Perched. Manny will morsel on that. Morselitis. Oh mm. my God. I have morselitis, it's a disease. Outdid yourself. Are these vegan? Absolutely not. <laughs> trauma. Vegas trauma. Vegas <laughs> trauma. <laughs> Remember when you spit out the food? Right. It was the bacon that sent me. That bacon was actually that, it tasted, horrifying. It tasted horrible. like a dog bone. It was horrifying. The bacon was horrible. horrible. It was bacon. It, it was, was bacon. bacon strips. Manny's gonna drink tonight. Oh yes, Manny is gonna have his first drink coffee what? tonight. <laughs> Tequila. Shot. 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 Another shot. one. Another glove. Another glove. Another glove. Box plane. No, I'm on myself. I we make to, a good team though. We sure do. I yeah. have to vlog you from like like my arm all the way up. I know when you do that, do it at your normal. That's height. a big. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Big. <laughs> big. It's not big. the pot getting the <laughs> pot <laughs> following the kettle. It's a Spider Man <laughs> meme. Nope. Like those, like those. Cut the cameras dead. That's us. All right. It is raining again in LA. It's the next day. The party was fabulous. I had a great time. Joey is back home here in LA and actually he's sick. So I wanted to speak a little candidly with you guys because I feel like at the end of these vlogs, I tend to have kind of like a moment with you guys and just talk. And I've talked to friends about this and I've talked to my therapist about things. For those of you who have been in a relationship, and first of all, before I get comments in here saying you're speaking negatively about your ex, blah, blah, blah. Girl, you are not my viewer. If that is your take on this, you don't know me as a person. So please unsubscribe and stop watching my videos. There are people who are so obsessed with putting me in this pigeonhole of the person I used to be in a relationship and in such a bright spotlight and they still think I'm, I'm that person and they still think I need to act a certain way because I was dating somebody who was so much more successful and etc. You know, for a long time that made me feel I was less than when really we're equals. Some people have successes at, at different times in their life and just because you're dating somebody who has outwardly more success in the public eye does not make you any less than. And for a long time I thought that and it got me really down. That's why I stopped being in his videos. If you're still around here with that mentality, please just stop watching my videos, stop commenting. I will block you, I'm not afraid to. It doesn't offend me anymore. It just makes me realize how much of a loser you are and you know, you are not entitled to have an opinion on my life without knowing me. Of course you uh, absolutely can have your opinion based on what I share, but it's just really weird that people hold on to this idea of me filling a role that I had to fill in a relationship, kind of like a subservient role as the supportive partner. It's just exhausting. We're all equals. We all want to be the best versions of ourselves. We all should want the best for each other, whether you're in a relationship or you're not. I'm not less than just because I didn't have certain successes at a certain time that my ex had it, et cetera, et cetera. I could talk about this for days. But what I'm getting at here is I wanted your opinion. When you exit a relationship, you've been with somebody for a long time, if you've been in one, when do you let go? What are your boundaries? You know, for me personally, I'm always, I always want to be the person that you can call, but at some point you have to have your boundaries so you, so each other can move on. You know what I mean? So unfortunately Joey's sick right now and he asked for my help. He said he's really sick. He's in bed. He can't leave the bed. He doesn't feel well. Normally I would be there in a second whether we were in the relationship or not. But over the past year, I've been trying to pull back a little bit. Of course, if it's life or death, I will be there. And if it's an emergency, especially with the dogs, I will be there. And I've already made my decision on what I'm gonna do, but what do you guys do? I know a lot of relationships aren't as intricate as mine used to be, and I think it's something that I'm struggling with a little bit because I know that I mentally am doing well. I have my therapist, I talk about all my emotions, like I speak to you guys very candidly about how I'm feeling and I don't really hide anything and I know that I have the depth and I can share my emotions with you guys. So for me, I'm happy to help 
but I think my personality is so different from my ex's. Like, I would never ask somebody for help. I, no matter how sick I was, I would take myself to the hospital, I would Postmates, I would Uber, you know, I have so many people who would care for me. Luckily, I have my mom in town who would, I have so many wonderful friends who would, if I even blinked, would jump at the opportunity. And is it wrong that I'm helping? Am I enabling the situation? Am I making things worse for myself or for him in the long term? What do you guys think? I'm curious. For me, I know that I'm at a good place in where I feel and my emotions with our relationship that I can go to his house like I'm doing now and go to Whole Foods and buy a bunch of healthy stuff to help him and you know make some soup and take care of the dogs. I can do that. But is that going to hurt me? I'm curious your opinion. I don't know. I'm kind of just rambling. I'm not trying to like make it seem like I'm this wonderful person who, you know, I'm going above and beyond. It's just the person I am. I would do it for any one of my friends. I would do it for any one of you guys. If you were in my life here in LA and you needed help, I would help you. I'm also trying to not overextend myself in 2023 because that's something that I have done my entire life. I've spoken to you guys this about this before. You know, you're always there for people. You're always available. You're burning the candle at both ends and then you have nothing left to give anymore and you can't even, you don't even have anything to give to yourself. I would just love an opinion. I'm curious. Like, is this detrimental? My feelings are very deep. It probably affects more than I think it does. And for somebody like my ex, I don't think he necessarily has that type of feeling and depth. I mean, we've went over this between him and I, like, we know that I'm a deeper person and I care a bit deeper and I, things affect me a little more. Some people are a little more like even keel, I'm like this, <laughs> you know? Everything is the end of the world and I, you know, I, I need to help in every way I can. And he's a little more simpler in terms of his emotions and everything. This all kind of like came to mind because a, a girlfriend of mine said like, why are you helping him? Doesn't he have Postmates? Why are you, why are you putting yourself out there? Why are you like, you have a busy schedule, like, but it really doesn't matter. I need to stay true to myself, right? I'm not the type of person who's going to do something just because somebody's going to do it in return to me. I'm not a conditional person and I'm realizing that some people are, or some people just like don't care and I'm always going to care, but is this going to stunt our growth as individuals and our ability to move on and be in relationships one day and you know, maybe not be as close one day. I'm not saying we're super close now, but you know, if he needs something, I'm always there and I'm happy to help. But again, I'm like that with anyone, but yeah, I'm rambling now, but I was curious your opinion and I wanted to be open with you guys of how I'm feeling and where I'm at and what I'm doing today. So let's go inside and make some soup, shall we? Anyways, Whole Foods has great coffee. I got him a big ass thing of celery juice. He's sick. And I'm listening to my favorite podcast, pause right now, but it is, um, very Delta with Delta Work and Raja. Anyways, I'm going to head inside. See you in a sec. Oh, she's so happy to see me. Wolfie's ready for dinner. Storm's here. Hi, boys. Wolfie. Wolfie. I mean, breakfast. Have you had breakfast yet? Oh, I'm so happy. And we've got the weasel. Hi, weasel. Hi, weasel. <laughs> Look how cute she is. <laughs> Do you all understand why I had to get groceries? This fridge? Gorgeous. But pathetic. Not the rotten garlic. So I'm gonna leave this at his door. I have Theraflu here. This stuff is amazing if you have like a fever or beginning signs of COVID. I don't know if he has COVID. That's the daytime one and the nighttime one. But this will save your throat. Celery juice. I like these Manuka honey drops. I got the eucalyptus version and this ginger version, but the ginger version can be a little scratchy on your throat if you have a sore throat. So I did the eucalyptus. I love these Therazinc lozenges. lozenges. They're not cough drops, it's for immune support, so definitely a cough drop still. That's why I got these cough drops. These always come in clutch, I love Ricola. Those are fab. And then I got these Coldies Defend Ease as well. I did a little concoction. All these little goodies. I'm gonna go put this by his door. Okay, I got some gorgeous vegetables. I'm gonna make a little roasted veggie soup. And then over here, hi guys. I got a roast chicken. I'm gonna roast this and make like a chicken noodle soup. Got some spaghetti squash. That's my favorite. This is Kite Hill Dairy Free Plain Cream Cheese. This is great to put in any soup to make it really creamy. 
in the blender. And then I got some, Joe's gluten-free, so I got this grain-free orzo and elbows to put in the chicken noodle soup. Got some more chicken just to add to the chicken noodle soup. And then I got a bunch of bone broth, some vegetable broth, and some chicken broth, chicken stock to add to the soups that I make. And these are gonna be my little, my little helpers, huh? Big veggies are roast. Ooh, ooh, y'all are foggy. Stunning, almost done. I have my chicken stock and my chicken breast for the chicken noodle soup here. These are the veggies for the chicken noodle soup. I do the carrots first, and then once these are almost tender, I'll add in the onion and the celery and some lemon, just a little citrus. And then I had so many extra vegetables from the other soup that I'm gonna just roast these and serve these, or put them in the fridge with the roasted chicken that I made. This is just potatoes, zucchini, squash, sweet potato, onions, just all good food. But yeah, I think that's it for today's video. Uh, there was so much going on. I hope you guys enjoy these big vlogs, but if you guys want the full recipe for the roasted one pan soup, which is chef's kiss, um, it is over on my TikTok, at Mr. Prada, and also on my Instagram. So go show my reel some love, and if you're inclined, go follow me on TikTok, and I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure to leave things better than how you found them. Love you so much, bye.